Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to dive straight into the interview itself when it comes to applying for dermatology in the UK. I'm going to share some of my experiences during the whole interview process where I managed to score a total of 38 out of 40 and hopefully you will get some good insights and tips on how to ace this interview. For those who don't know me, my name is Chris and I am a dermatology trainee currently working in the west of Scotland. I applied for dermatology last year and had to go through the whole application, including the interview itself. I have to say the whole process was actually quite daunting for me because dermatology is quite a competitive specialty and there aren't a lot of resources out there. Also, I had to do the interview virtually as well, which just adds a whole new level of stress to the situation. The interview itself is actually the most important aspect of the application. For those who don't know, the interview makes up 80% of the total score and 20% is just allocated for the portfolio. Essentially, the interview is divided into three stations and you get two interviewers for each station. One of the station is the portfolio station, which is also known as suitability and commitment. And in this station, you are given approximately six minutes to showcase your CV. During this time, you have to show the interviewers that you are committed to the specialty and that you deserve to be selected. This is the time, so to speak. So make sure you tell your interviewers all the great things you've done. Some of the questions that the interviewers may like to ask would include things like why dermatology? What makes you suitable for dermatology? What makes a good dermatologist? What does the dermatologist do on a day-to-day -day basis? I have listed a few of the common questions that are asked during the interview process. One book that I would highly recommend is the black and white book that everyone uses called Medical Interviews. It has a lot of sample questions and answers and tips on how to build a good, well-structured answer. I have to say I've treated this like my own Bible, where I created personalized answers to most, if not all the questions in a book. I would then try to memorize as much as I could and then try practicing either in front of the mirror or get someone to ask questions and practice um, your answers in front of them. It is very important for you to sound natural, not to rehearse or script it because this is not what the interviewers are looking for. Another station is on research and academic medicine, which is also known as the abstract station. In this station, you'll be given five minutes to read the abstract without the conclusion, and subsequently you'll be given another approximately five minutes to interpret and critically appraise the abstract. This will be a dermatology research paper and typically will be published within the past six months. Common journals include the New England Journal of Medicine, BJD, JAAD, and The Lancet. The abstract selected can be from any type of study really, from RCT to systematic review, um, and even cohort studies, case control studies, and cross-sectional studies. Sometimes in the station, you may be asked further questions on research in general. For example, they may ask questions like, what is the latest research paper you've read? How do you get funding for research? Why is research important? So on and so forth. In the past, they used to ask questions on professionalism and clinical governance, but I wasn't asked this last year and it doesn't seem like it is included this year either. Abstract station is a station that I, amongst many others, struggle with. And I think the reason why this is so is because statistics aren't taught a lot in medical school and a lot of us don't have the habit of reading papers regularly. One good tip I have is to have a structure when you critique the abstract. There isn't a lot of time to prepare and critique the abstract. So really having a good structure makes you think of the important points to say just in case you get cut off. You won't have a lot of information just by reading the abstract alone. So I would advise against criticizing the authors and the paper too harshly. A good way of phrasing criticism, in my opinion, is something along the line of I would like to see the authors include blah 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 rather than this author didn't include this or that. Another important tip I have is to read as many papers as you can from all the major journals I've listed within the past six months and try to critique the abstract yourself without looking at the conclusion. You will also need to know all the different types of studies available and the different statistical terms like odds ratio and relative risks. The interviewers sometimes, if they are cheeky enough, they may ask you to define certain statistical concepts, so make sure you know the common ones. If you're interested to know more about how I prepared for the abstract station as well as my structure for critical appraisal, do like this video and drop me a comment down below so I will make a video just on abstract itself. The last station is a clinical station where you'll be given a hypothetical scenario and be asked to give your differential diagnosis and management plan. This usually lasts for around seven minutes and typically you'll be given a photograph to describe. However, in my case last year, I wasn't given one. In my case, I was asked to run through some of the questions I will ask in history as well as some of the investigations I would like to do. 
The clinical cases are usually quite straightforward and are typically created at the level of medical trainees rather than dermatologists. Common cases include acne, herpes, urticaria, and dermatological emergencies. My case was bullous pemphigoid, and I realized over the past few years there has been an increasing trend to have a joint dermatological and medical presentation. For this station, I think it is very important for you to be able to describe lesions and rashes using the right dermatological terms, so make sure you practice describing photographs of these lesions out loud. One good book I would recommend is the 100 Cases in Dermatology book, where you get cases and photographs at the front, which you can work through with your friends. I also find practicing questions with friends really useful and quite enjoyable because you work together to help each other. There are courses running every year, such as Derm Doc, Derm School, and A Day in St. John's, where you get exposure in dermatology, and sometimes they teach you how to describe uh, skin rashes as well. But ultimately, this station tests how experienced and comfortable you are with dermatology. As for me, I took a year out to be a clinical fellow, and I find the whole experience really useful when it comes to preparing for this station. My final words for anyone sitting the interview is not to panic. Find a friend that you work well with and practice doing the questions regularly. I strongly recommend doing this because I find the whole process much more enjoyable and it's quite nice to help one another out. I also gain so much just by listening to what my friends say. Also, if you don't succeed this round, don't worry, you can always try again next year. I myself have had to go through two interviews. The first one went horribly wrong because I had literally no dermatology experience. And after a year of clinical fellowship, I gained enough exposure and experience and I managed to get top marks in my second uh, round of interview. I just want to say don't give up if this is something you truly are passionate about. There have been so many times in the past I wanted to give up and just switch my career, but I persevered and look where I am right now. I hope this video is useful for anyone applying for dermatology in the UK and preparing for the interview. If you like watching this video, you may want to check out my other video where I talk all about portfolio in the specialty application. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. Bye-bye.